Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Just Yelta Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Do you know why it's such a beautiful Thursday night here in our respective houses? Because we're here online. Yeah. Live. Because I have hot chocolate. That too. And I've got my Mountain Dew. We both love the sugary goodness. Indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I, of course, am your host, Charlie, and I'm joined once again by the prolific cover himself, Zilios. This is the Thursday Night Hangout. It's a weekly live show where we try our best to cover the topics that are most important to you during the show. If you haven't had a chance to add your topic or question, uh, by all means, drop it in the chat. And we'll try to incorporate it in the show. Uh, if we do run out of time, uh, have no fear. We will add it to the next show. So... Bring it on. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's let's get down to brass tacks. All right. Um, <clears throat> the first story, and it's been like an evolving one over, I guess, a week, is um, some of you might know of a website or, or service called um, OnlyFans. OnlyFans? Yes. It's where you have fans that are like only just for you. Well, so, so it's kind of like a... It, it's kind of like an alternative to Patreon, but uh, the main thing is, um, really, it the porn aspect is really what started OnlyFans. And then, of course, we oh. heard the news about OnlyFans sending out an email to everyone going, yeah, we're not going to do the porn stuff anymore, so you've been warned. October 1st, you're gone. A month from now. So basically, you have a lot of people. You had a lot of people pissed because this was their livelihood, and now they're saying you got until October first, and then you're gone. Uh, so uh, there was a hell of an uproar. Uh, there was a lot of rumors going around saying that uh, a lot of sponsors, uh, like credit card companies and stuff, uh, they wanted to pull their support um, because they didn't want to support the uh, sex industry. Um, I don't agree with that. Um, but so basically here's the deal. So, um, I have, they, they finally have given down, uh, an update and that is that they're not going to do anything. Uh, it turns out that there was three banks specifically that basically would not allow for the transfer of funds. Yep. Uh, to basically only fans. Uh, uh, so, so only fans decided, well, if, if we can't get the money from these three banks or these three, you know, uh, uh um, um, globally recognized banks out of the bajillion of banks there, we can't do only fans, uh, or you can't do the sexually explosive stuff. Look, here's the deal. If you uh, are not harming yourself uh, and you want to show off your body in either explicit or artistic ways, by all means, you go. Hey, if everyone should have equal opportunity to make money as long as you're not being exploited or hurt. Um, well, that is the crux of what the, the thought of the original issue was. Um, cause the same thing happened basically with Pornhub last no, year. Oh, right. And don't forget that this was the, uh, what only fans experienced for a week was the Tumblr approach. Well, the thing that happened with Pornhub though, is the credit card companies did in fact pull their support. Yep. Um, cause there was basically an article that came out from Pornhub a, a, last year. That was basically that Master there were, card. um, it was multiple credit cards though. It's not right. But stuff. MasterCard was like the big one and that and they and a lot of people the rumors about only fans was that mastercard jumped back into the game but that was false um and part of the rumor too though with only fans which has not come to light is that there was a um similarly frightening article about only fans just like pornhub where people were being basically sex trafficked and having things posted against their will on the website uh, and that was really the big part, whereas if that rumor had come true, um, that was what really set off the alarm bells for the um, credit card companies. Because that's really what it comes down to, is if you're a one of these companies, like a Pornhub or a OnlyFans, 
the reality is if you can't get your financial transactions, you're dead in the water. Right. Um, so uh, I don't know if OnlyFans was doing it because of the, if it was just the finances or because of, there maybe there was somebody was getting on a moral high horse behind the scenes. No, from my understanding, it was simply because of, of money, uh, issues the the basically denied transfers of money because if, if you're on patreon if you're only fans you're on pornhub you're on whatever other you know uh subscription service uh understand that the platform is going to take a chunk of change from every single don uh, uh subscription uh that you take um the it's, only fan type of ones are usually 20 to 30 percent. Right. Um, so and there. But the other thing was there was a lot of miscommunication. A lot of people thought that um, uh, like nudity was going to be barred as well because um, the wording was really centered around explicit acts. Now, what is explicit acts? And that's what got me in trouble. Now, here's here's the big thing, though. Because of all this craziness, and every, and rightfully so, it caused a hell of a panic. A lot of the people who are dependent on OnlyFans lost a ton of subscribers because they're like, "Well, shit, they're leaving. So why would I, you know, continue to pay?" Um, I mean, it's not all too different than like any other platform. Like, take for instance, um, Twitch that we're on. I mean, if you're a big streamer, we've heard, you know, when the DMCA's were all rage, I know they're still there. Um, but, you know, when people are getting their stuff taken down or getting banned due to copyright clients, right. it's kind of the same concept where, you know, your livelihood is in a way in the hands of a third party platform, which you really don't have any control over. And OnlyFans is kind of the same way where, you know, if you're doing your content on OnlyFans and all of a sudden it gets revoked, what recourse do you really have um, other than to really find another platform? Right. But the, so, and, and what a, a lot of people uh, out there who use OnlyFans or any of the other services, um, they're like diversify, diversify, diversify. You can't because yeah. the, the landscape is changing every single moment of every single day. You need to have, What's up, Nakamoto? Uh, you need to have multiple ways of continuing your income stream. And hopefully, if you have people that are only on, um, if you only have people that are on OnlyFans and it were to, you know, go the way of Tumblr, you could get them to go over to another service as long as the service allows for that kind of content, which well, is hey, even a problem. Even outside confusion, like we're on, you know, we have... Discord, we have um, YouTube that we posted on. Right. Obviously, we're here on Twitch, so we also. I, I think that is prudent. You know, if you're, you know, I would consider OnlyFans. You're really the equivalent of the independent business owner. Um, it does seem financially prudent to post in multiple different locations. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, for video games, I don't know how much makes sense to post outside of twitch because there's just not a whole lot of i mean yes if you're a bigger streamer i get it you could probably help but most of them it's really twitch is ready to find that money but there are quite a few um so i don't remember what article it was but i saw where there's like the 10 other alternatives to basically only fan so there right. are definitely alternatives to the only fan with a number of them um being shady. Right here that like hey we will never ban sexually explicit content on this specific only fan equivalent here here's here's a funny story don't believe them because <laughs> sure. look, look 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 you you have a bunch you companies are going to say whatever the hell they need to say in order to get content onto content that will be subscribed to or paid for and they get a cut of that money and once they you know once they build up enough Who's to say they don't change the rules? I mean, yeah, I mean that's the Tumblr way, right? I mean, they, but I think you also, and you gotta wonder, like, with something like OnlyFan, it's and sometimes when you're at the top, there's a bit of an echo chamber, right? Right. Where maybe you don't quite realize, honestly, like how big of a deal would it be if they had basically eliminated porn off of OnlyFans? 
And maybe it did take the wake up, the great wake up call of the internet to be like, oh, wait, this really would have killed OnlyFans. Um, I, to, to be honest, I don't think it would have completely killed OnlyFans. I think that um, forcing the individuals who have OnlyFans that, that have a legitimate, uh, yeah. uh, basically, revenue stream and pushing them to, to try to find an alternative. Yes, there are alternatives out there that are, that are safe and, you know, you could build your brand on it. Once again, you never know this, if it's going to go away in the future, but there's, everyone deserves protection and security. So no matter what you do, like, like I said, as long as you're not being exploited or hurt or getting hurt, then you go. I mean, I, if if your deal is that you make um, your own artistic paintings in the nude and you basically throw your body at it and utilize all your body parts to paint, more power to you. I, I mean, think this, it sounds like a new calling for Charlie. I think you're onto something here. Dear God, no. Only dear. confusions. <laughs> yeah, it would be confusing now, wouldn't it? But speaking of Charlie's art, I do want to point out that... Uh, Wait, this no, please stop talking. No, I want to hear more about you. This this entire box, well, I'll just show you. This These are all no cards. These are my brain doodles, and I'm up to number 227. Mm. So if you'd like a, a brain doodle from Charlie, uh, hit me up, and I'll see what I can do. All right. Maybe uh, you should start an only fan of your brain doodles. Brain doodles. Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, yes, there, there, there is, I think OnlyFans was, I think one of the pro, one of the issues is that OnlyFans is synonymous with like nudity and sex. Oh yeah, NFT. it definitely is. I need, okay, so here's the thing, Nakamoto. I need to figure out what the, you know, I understand, yes, NFT, it's the, the late, I, I, I can't. I don't, I don't know. It's so weird. The concept is so weird and it, it makes me feel so old, but yeah. Um, now, okay. So, uh, so you want to talk of old. So we had a chat today mm -hmm. about internet safety for people, students, and they kept on referencing Facebook and we're like, would you realize that kids don't use Facebook, right? Snapchat and, uh, TikTok and whatever other fancy whatever, yeah. things are out there. But that's kind of part of it. It's, you know, keeping with the trend, it kind of like, you know, the alternatives to OnlyFans. It's mm -hmm. like, we know OnlyFans because it's a big name, but there's other ones kind of like, you know, for people of our generation, Facebook is the big name, yep. but there's the other ones like TikTok in Snapchat hurt my brain, but that's what the kids use. And that's right. just, the reality, and there's probably the same thing with OnlyFans. So there's other new ones that all the kids are using that I don't know about, and don't probably plan on knowing about if I'm going to be honest. Okay, so uh, so uh, Nakamoto says you already get it, you just don't know it. It's like what those collectibles behind you. Okay, so my Funko don't encourage him, Nakamoto. Don't encourage him. My Funko Pop collection, which is over 280 now. Um, yeah, I. The thing is, it's 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 a digital collection, and I just don't understand. Like the NBA or or certain teams in the NBA are doing it, and you're and it like gives you the rights to that little whatever. I I don't know. I'll have to research it more. Anyways, on the topic of nudity, let's talk about the fact, and and this is just a head scratcher. Oh, this is confusion goes nude. What? No, huh? God, no, 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 no. You do not want. Look, you think that I'm pale right now? I've turned down the brightness on my camera as much as possible, and I'm still like ghosting. If I this... were to take off my shirt, you'd be blinded. Alt confusion goes wild at uh, Dragon Con. We could be entrances in the parade. What do you think? No. No. Just saying. Mm -mm. Nope. Uh -uh. Uh, but anyways, uh, speaking of nudity, uh, an interesting story uh, came out just recently, and it and it uh, it makes me scratch my head because this guy. Okay, so I'm assuming that the vast majority of people out there may have heard of a band called Nirvana. Yes. Uh, and one of their most popular albums happened to have a baby in a swimming pool. Oh yes, nude. 
Uh, and so they're like, you know, it's child pornography. And so the guy who is now the grown up version of that baby is suing for $150,000 because it's child pornography and he was exploited. Okay, so here's what's kind of funny, right? Yeah. Is I was at this internet, you know, safety training thing, whatever. Mm -hmm. And one of the conversations that came up was basically make sure that your kids, and it was good advice, don't get me wrong. Let's talk about like kids should not be posting identical information about themselves on the internet. Totally makes sense. Totally get it. Right. But the irony to me of that statement, because we're all talking to adults in the room, you know who's posting the identical information on the internet? The adults. Yes, it's the parents posting like, look at little Susie in her bathing suit at the pool. Hashtag name of subdivision. Yeah. Like most of the time, and I guess my point on this one is I'm guessing, I don't actually, I didn't actually see the story. I would think that probably the parents probably signed the rights or did something along those lines. Oh yeah. I'm sure that, that, that they got, yeah. a, a, you know, some sort of, of, um, uh, compensation for a picture of their baby in a swimming pool. But that's what's funny to me is like, you know, basically all these kids, um, I mean, I'm not calling somebody out as being a bad thing, right. but the reality is, is all these parents are posting all these pictures of their kids basically without their permission. And yet we're sitting here telling kids basically not to do the same thing. Right. Well, the, the thing that's really funny real quick is that, um, that the parents are more likely to actually give the location of their kids away than the kids themselves, because the kids are starting to understand. I should probably not say I'm not, my family is on vacation. We're not, no one's at the house, which the parents do. They're like, look, the whole family's on vacation. Everyone's going, okay, so you live where now? Oh, okay. Yep. I, I can believe it. I, it's it's kind of a, there is definitely a little bit of irony in there. Yes. Okay. So um, so I it's, I think it's just stupid. I, I I hope this lawsuit gets thrown out because uh, seriously, when the hell did that album come out? It's like the nineties. So early nineties. Yeah. Yeah. It, this guy must he must have done something stupid and is out of money. And he wants to sue. That's all right, he just he he wants quick cash. Huh? 1991. Okay, so this dude, that's, what, 30 years ago? Take a chill pill, man. Just take a damn chill oh, pill. Oh, damn it. That, that That's depressing. That, we're, we're, we're not going to go in it. Anyways, okay, so... Technically, it's still only 29 years. Whatever. Um. Okay, so we have that weird thing. And then we also have, uh, we, we talked about, you know, all these different platforms that you stream or, or you have services on. Uh, and we mentioned Twitch, which of course we're currently t- uh, um, streaming on Twitch, and we know that Twitch has a weird ass, um, you know, uh, history when it comes to banning users, uh, some for unknown reasons and others for, um, for basically people flagging the channel, and them getting enough like basically flags that they get suspended for a good chunk of time and they there's no appeal process. Now, of course, from my understanding, I don't know if that appeal process is completely in there, but you have the ability to kind of like go, eh, I, I, I uh, think that someone was just trolling. But uh, Twitch, as you may remember, um, permabanned a very big name that was on the platform. Um, and that of course was, um, Dr. Disrespect and there was never a, um, there was never a reason that was made public. Uh, not, was it Dr. Misrespect or is it Mr. Disrespect? Yeah. Dr. Disrespect. Dr. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, Dr. Disrespect. Um, and he, um, and he's basically gone on record saying, I don't know what the hell's going on. And then he made the switch over to YouTube. Now, he is still, I mean, he's exclusively on YouTube. But, of course, he's not making the numbers that he was making uh, on Twitch. And also, uh, when he got permabanned from Twitch, he lost a bunch of sponsors. So that also, you know, cut it to the bottom line. Now, the news has just come out that Dr. Disrespect is, and I quote, going to sue the 
fuck out of Twitch for the bullshit that they did to permanently ban him. Now, he's still not going into the details, but it looks like Twitch is going to have a fight on their hands. It would be interesting to see because, I mean, you basically have two routes, right? Either right. you settle um, and we don't really ever find out what happens. Or if you do go to court, it's kind of like, does he really want the reason that he was banned to come out into light? Well, I think I, I think if he's going, it's bullshit, then I think he wants the reason to come out of light. And, and legally, he can't say anything because it's, you know, it's going to court. Um I think you have more faith in his intelligence than I do. The guy's a smart guy. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he he had apparently, you know, I mean, of course, like I said, he lost a lot of sponsorships. Um, and that's what tends to happen if you get perma banned from a platform. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming that he's going to sue for uh, wrongful, you know, wrongful... Uh, Termination? Yeah, wrongful termination and lost, uh, not wages, but lost profit. But I guess the question really comes down to is, does Twitch have any actual responsibility to allow us to be on their platform? Like, I mean, do they? I mean, really? Like, why does they Twitch... Can, they, they're the gatekeeper. They could control when or if or how you, you, you get on the platform. I know, but yes, but does do they do they have a responsibility to basically allow anybody onto the platform unless they have a valid excuse to ban them? I guess is the real question. Yes. Why they're private or publicly held company doesn't really matter to me, but why? Because they I make mean, money it, off I of mean, the yeah, ads that run on every fire single stream. in America for any reason, how is this any different? Because the more people you have streaming on the platform, the more money they make. So why would they want to... Uh, uh, that's why they care. It's because they like green. They want as well, many people as possible. Are you Dr. Disrespect or Twitch when you say that? Twitch. Yeah, I mean, Twitch does, but if they had a... I agree that to them, it makes sense to have anybody on there to make the money, but... From a legal perspective, why do they have to actually allow anybody onto their platform? Like, what legal duty are they under to actually permit anybody onto their platform? Because they make money. I'm not sure that actually answers the question. But look, here's here's the thing. If you have you want individ you want traffic on your site, if you're, you know, if you're a website or whatever. Yeah. So do they have the ability, you know, do they care if people go to their site? Hell yeah, they do because it makes if the more people, the more money they make. Are they responsible for the 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 content and the streamers that are on there? Yes, because they're a company. They like money. They don't want to get in trouble. Which, by the way, uh, Twitch has also come down and says no more, um, uh, like gambling slots type of uh, content. Because, oh man! Yeah, they go by Friday nights. Oh, good lord! But anyways, uh, so we'll we'll see what comes of it. I'm I'm I'll be very interested to see. You know, I'm I'm going to make the assumption that Twitch is going to settle out, uh, and and Doctor Disrespect is going to have to s sign a uh, NDA as to why. Yeah, he's, I feel like even if Twitch was total, I don't know, obviously, but even if they feel like they're totally in the right. They probably don't want their secret algorithm sauce, whatever it is, coming to light. Kind of like Google, you know, they've always had pressure on like, what is your algorithm? And they don't want that coming out. Right. Or, well, it's I it's think, like, what's what's the formula? What's the secret formula for Coke? They don't want. I mean, they they they. It what is. What are the their... magic eating ingredients for your Chick Fil? Not Chick Fil A. Um, the other chicken. Zaxby sauce. No, uh, the big chicken. Uh, KFC. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. They're it's they're herbs. It's like eight secret herbs or something. Right. No. Exactly. They're they're gonna want to keep as much of their, you know, their metrics, their algorithms, um, and also keep here. Here's the, here's the thing. 
if they actually go to court, this is my opinion. Of course, I am not. I I do not have a law degree. Um, I've never studied. You know, I've never studied years of law. But this is my. This would be if I was Twitch. But by I, God, we have the Internet Armrest Doctorate of Lawyership. Yeah, I could. You know, I could take a an educated guess because I'm an educated man. Um, I read more than lawyers, don't you know? Okay, so so here's if I was Twitch, I would settle out of court because I would be fearful that by going into court, they're going to the results could cause a restructuring of the um, the EULA and user license agreement um, for or basically the the you know, the codes of conduct or whatever. And they're, they're going to have to, they're not going to be allowed to have such vague verbiage where they have wiggle room to ban people. If they think are getting too close, I think that, you know, it, once it comes to light, I think that a lot of people like, will. I would be fearful that more people who've had, um, bans, uh, in the past would then, come out of the woodworks going, whoa, 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 whoa. N- no, that's not how that should be. And I shouldn't have been banned for that if it's this interpretation. Yep. I, I'm of the opinion that really like Twitch is under no obligation to host any content creator on Twitch. Um, so really they can ban anybody for any reason they want or no reason that they want. Um, just like my employer could fire me tomorrow and sucks to be me but i think i think the problem is that if they were to start going no eh, we don't want you on the site you would probably see uh, an exodus happen well i mean obviously it's not in twitch's best interest I right absolutely it. yeah i, I, I don't and that. that's why i kept going uh, back to the money uh can we get our mixer back going guys oh jesus uh so i mean it would be nice to have competition in the streaming realm I mean, technically, uh, Facebook uh, and and YouTube, but not they don't have the reach of you know Twitch. However, apparently, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, the oh. mastermind behind Facebook, has come out with a a new virtual uh, awesomeness that will be revolutionary in the future, and it's it's a VR um, meeting. Uh, application where you get to choose your avatar and you're going to sit in a boardroom or whatever and you're going to be able to host the meeting through the entire thing i'm like so it's like a worse version of zoom is what you're saying bingo that's exactly what everyone wants it's it's a worse version of zoom or blue jeans or webex or whatever the hell you use out there and everyone's going to be an avatar uh in first person uh (laughs) <laughs> setting a route absolutely of miserable yeah actually no this is actually their secret plan to get all these work from home people back into the office exactly yeah, when we present true. this idea it's like oh hell no i'm going back in the office so like, i don't want to do that and well okay so to me personally this is opening on the flood that would open up the floodgates for people to just screw with you and have like the most detestable avatars there It'd be like it'd be like having the avatars from Second Life sitting around the table. No, it's gonna be HR approved bland avatars. You can have a gray shirt or red shirt. You can have HR approved khakis. You have to go past your ankles. We ain't gonna see any skin, and everything's gotta be on the up and up. Um, It's gonna be a VR helmet, so we're gonna know if we're actually sitting in your office approved chair and not your couch, like we know we all do, anyways. So. HR is going to love this. No. Anyway, I, that's j- just, you know, I'm like, oh, for God's sakes, people. I mean, that uh, was the original rumor of basically why Facebook bought Oculus was really to move VR, not into gaming, but to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Into the social business. media platform. Yeah. That, that was the whole original. But you have a problem where basically we're the generation who still uses Facebook. And the young kids don't give a crap about Facebook. Well, it, so it, it would be. It's basically uh, Sony Home, which was a failed experiment on the PlayStation 3. And there's oh. like, no, oh, everyone's going to forget about that. But we'll not. It's not going to be about gaming. It's going to be, you know, more of a, 
a, a corporate tool that people could use. No, they're not going to use. You that. know what's kind of funny is like the last generation of consoles, like the PS4 and the Xbox One. Yep. Like VR was supposed to be like the killer feature on those consoles, and now you have the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, which should actually be able to do VR fine. And yet you basically don't hear much about exactly. it. Exactly. They're not highlighting all. it at all. And now it's like, now we have the console that can run it. Meh, whatever. VR is just the, 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 okay, here's the thing. If you have a third party peripheral that is not required for your PC or your console, and it is over like, it's almost the same price as a console. There's not going to be a lot of people jumping on board and supporting that. It's a niche product. I mean, VR is still, I mean, three, four years ago, it was supposed to be all the rage. Yep. And it really just kind of petered into being that niche product at the moment. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah. I always think of, what's his name? Bobby, the guy at the convention who is like a VR developer or tester because he has all the stuff. Uh, uh, Bobby Black Wolf. Uh, he, uh, he did all the, he did a, He's, I think he's got almost every single VR helmet, uh, bec- and it, and it's not like he went out and bought them. Uh, from my understanding, they were um, provided to him because he has stereo vision, which makes which that's what it is, which yeah. means that he sees things in two D, not three D. I knew he had a good reason. But a VR headset will allow him to see things in three D, which is pretty cool. Um, I know they're actually like really used a lot in hospitals for like surgeries and stuff, yep. which actually makes sense. Like that's a logical place to use it. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, you know, we're still sitting there. The reality is people like sitting their lazy asses on a couch or a recliner and not standing to play their video games. Look, I'm still waiting for Oasis, okay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which, by the way, for those out there who don't know, you need to freaking read the book Ready Player One, and then you'll understand. 26 years from now, when, in theory, we can retire, that's when it needs to come out. So we can just literally slip right into retirement. Into in a, theory, a, we can retire. You know we're never gonna happen. we're never going to be able to retire. Well, I don't care. I can dream, okay? Okay, fine. Okay, so um, changing gears yet again. Uh, there First was- gear, second gear, third gear? Fifth gear? I, I've never I've never actually driven a manual, so I couldn't freaking tell tell you at all. Um you but what I can tell you is that there is let let's let's have some happy news, okay? So there once upon a time was a company called Studio thirty eight, and it was founded by a pitcher who was <laughs> who got really famous because of a bloody sock and he loved video games. But he apparently sucked balls at, at finances and, and running a company and took out a huge-ass loan. But you know what he was good at? Hmm. Throwing balls. Yeah. Curve balls. Um, I don't know if he actually threw curve balls. But he was a anyway, basketball pitcher. Yeah. Kurt Schilling was a great pitcher. Not a very good businessman. Um, but, okay, yeah, so... You're a good person in general. <laughs> nah. So, um... So the the good news is that um, the only game that came out for Studio 38 was a game that was released in 2012 called Kingdom of Amalur Reckoning. And um, they basically, they clo- they had to close because they had over $150 million owned to apparently... A thousand creditors, <laughs> um, and so basically, uh, in the year twenty twenty one, the four hundred employees uh, that were uh, affected by this closure are finally, finally getting their final paycheck wow. <laughs> for the work they did on Kings of Amalur. Man, that was a that was a fun RPG though. That's the thing. Like, that's why. Like, yes, Kurt Schilling was a dipwad when it came to the you know that business aspect of it. From actual gameplay perspective, it's a great game. 
Absolutely. But okay, but I, I do want I do want to point out that there is um there is a downside of this and it is that they're probably not gonna be able to get the full amount uh, uh paid. From uh from what I'm reading, it looks like they will get some money, but uh they're not gonna get the they're they're not even gonna get forty percent. So it's kind of like bankruptcy when you when your creditors get a percentage of what in theory would be owed to you. Exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, so uh, you know, here at least they're getting some money. I mean, I would love if you basically put your blood, sweat, and tears into a project that you're supposed to be paying paid f to for, you should get all the money that you were promised. And uh, you know. Was that nine years, and and nine years after the fact of not getting your final paycheck, you're getting some money, but you're not going to get all of it, or even half of it, maybe close to a quarter of it or less. That's that still hurts. Bonus. Hopefully, those individuals, those four hundred individuals, uh, are still doing okay, even though they got super dicked over um now speaking of getting dicked over actually he wasn't dicked over there's a very good reason for what uh what was announced was remember there's a company out there called activision blizzard mm -hmm. and and for those out there who don't know they have been sued uh quite a bit uh as of late um for basically sexual misconduct, sexual harassment, um, unfair business practices uh, when it comes to the hiring process. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the what every single company does, uh, with not every single company, but a lot of companies do, is the burn them and turn them policy uh, that they're also getting in trouble with. And remember that a lot of the names that were associated, like, egregiously associated with the, the the harassment and stuff like that were like big names in Blizzard. And there was a story, there was a rumor that came out. Actually, no, there, it wasn't a rumor. Um, and when all this crap hit, uh, basically, you know, the fallout, there were the, um, the Overwatch Pro League announcers uh, did not... They they basically dropped the name of one of the characters that may be played. Uh, so they basically say uh, so instead of saying their name, the the character's name, they would just say the gunslinger. Uh, the the game we're talking, yeah, the the name we're talking about is McCree. Now, Blizzard uh, has officially come out and said that later this by later this year, McCree will no longer be in the game. The name will no longer be in the game. They are going to change the name to something else, which I'll be very interested to see uh, what they name him. But uh, yeah, they because they named it after. Well, um, oh my gosh, I dropped uh, uh, Jesse McCree, who was like. Uh, a long time Blizzard guy. He was the lead designer for Diablo Four. He's had his his uh, name put on a ton, ton of um, of titles. So they're trying. Of course, they've they've got to uh, kind of wash away that bad bad name or that bad bad man's reference uh, in the game. So. I don't. I have mixed feelings about that because it's. I mean, because McCree on its own, it's a great Westerner name. Like, to me, it says McCree, and I always feel like there's a bit of a Streisand effect with this. And so, for those who don't know, what the Streisand effect is basically, um, if you have something said about you and you sue about it, all of a sudden, all these people know about it who would not have known otherwise. Um, and the reality is that a lot of people. I would say the overwhelming majority of people, they probably heard something about this pleasure stuff, but they had no idea 
about this McCree fellow being a part of this whole saga. Right, but I don't um, think I don't think that this will actually work to their benefit. I think it's going to put more spotlight. Well, why would you want it? Why did you change a name? And exactly, they're just like, yeah. oh, oh, okay. Exactly. And it just brings highlight. Um, and I've actually seen conflicting stories. Mm -hmm. So one story is, yes, it was named after the developer, Mr. McCree. But the other way I've also read it is, depending on whose story you read, is that McCree came up was came up with independently as a good Westerner name. They're like, oh wait, we have a developer named McCree. That's actually kind of cool. Let's ask him if it's okay if he minds. No, I, I think it was. Uh, uh, I think they, when they first came out, it, I think Blizzard uh, even said that it was an homage to a, a, a hard working guy who's been with Blizzard forever. But you know, once again, I I, I never worked for Blizzard, so I, I couldn't you know, officially tell I, I, mean, I mean, I get where they're coming from. They need to do something, obviously, about exactly. the storm they've done. I'm not sure this is the answer. Um, I mean, does it really do anything? Because it, it seems like it's really the high ups that need to be basically sacked and fired, not changing the name of a character that nobody really knew was associated with a dirtbag in the first place. No, I mean, look, look, there are companies that have rebranded themselves because of bad press because let's say you're a tire company that became synonymous with your tire exploding on Ford Explorers. You go through a rebrand. Well, in this case though, the equivalent of that would be renaming it Hellfire instead of Blizzard. Like, to be honest with you, I think that, you know, this tire company, which these are not Blizzard anymore anyways. No, they're not. They're, they're a shell if, or like a, a little shattered piece of the shell. Um, I would purse. I'm gonna put my my suggestion McGraw. Keep the Mc, Mc but just oh, McGraw that's, instead of Cree. That that's a compromise. That's a co hey, look at that compromise. That's what ah, we try to do sometimes. We don't right? do that shit. Either that or when I actually, I think my favorite suggestion I've seen is kind of like the Washington football team called like that Western guy. And uh. Well, I mean, look, the Cleveland Indians, they cha they've changed in their name, too. Ooh, what about calling them Eastwood? Westwood. I mean, you they can don't look, 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 because Clint Eastwood's kids would maybe one of them or grandkids plays Overwatch like, oh, granddaddy or daddy needs to get some money because they're using his name because he played a lot of Westerns. If you're going to go that route, just call him John Wayne. I don't think anybody would be opposed to John Wayne. No, I don't think so either. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to take just a moment to thank uh, and, you know, give a spotlight to the friends of the show. So let's give you give those amazing individuals a little love uh, like we do every single week. So the first one, of course, is the Indie Cluster. The Indie Cluster is an organization of independent game developers that want to gain exposure by being involved in the community. They collectively journey to popular conferences as a traveling booth to help gain attention for their games. They make partnerships in local communities to bring games to the mainstream mindset. They highlight local, unusual, and rare concepts that challenge the paradigm of the common. They also host events to teach kids and minority groups about game development to hopefully one day enter the industry themselves. If you'd like more information about Indie Cluster, go to IndieCluster.com, which is I-N-D-I-E-C-L-U-S-T-E-R.com. Now, of course, our, our next uh, thank you or shout out that we have to do is the one and only Hero Chiropractic. Uh, I, he has been uh, the gentleman who set this up, Ryan Moore, has been my chiropractor for years now. I met him at Momocon, and he's amazing. Hero Chiropractic is a unique health care practice set up by Ryan Moore, the company's focus to elevate a patient's experience of freedom, creative expression, and joy. They believe that everyone can be a hero and has incredible heroic potential inside themselves waiting to be unleashed. Hero Chiropractic focuses on mobile chiropractic care in the greater Atlanta area. They are committed to healing clients by creating a plan of action uniquely suited for each person. They make that plan of action as convenient 
and affordable as possible, and most importantly, suited to your individual needs. If you want more information, go to www.herochiropractic.com. Now, of course, the the new kid on the block is uh, the one and only Noodle Boy Media. Founded in 2015 by Andrew Tran, Noodle Boy Media, previously White Kid 47 Media, is your choice for professional photo shoots and panel recordings at conventions. They pride themselves in providing a high level of professionalism, top-notch experiences, and quality services. If you want more information and to view their full list of services, check out facebook.com slash noodleboymedia. And those are the thank yous, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, since we did the thank yous, you know what's coming up next. And that, of course, is the Ultra Confusion uh, personal shoutouts, I guess. I guess, yeah, we're going to highlight some Ultra Confusion stuff. How about that? So, ladies and gentlemen, the first one that we always highlight is the one and only Extra Life, uh, which has been running for 11 years total. So, guess what? Alter Confusion is proud to say we have been fundraising for Extra Life for 10 years straight. 10 years? That's right. We missed the first year, but we got all the rest. Extra Life is gamers doing what they do best gaming to help sick and injured children at their chosen children's miracle network hospital the money that we raise through extra life will go directly to our chosen hospital which of course is children's Healthcare atlanta as unrestricted funds this means that the hospital decides where and how to spend the money to ensure the dollars you raise make the biggest impact in the lives of the kids they treat. So if you have the capacity to donate, please go to extra-life.org and search for Altered Confusion. Now, I do want to point this out. If you do not have the capacity to donate, but you do want to be a part of Extra Life, go to extra-life.org and you can sign up today. Uh, as a single participant, or if you want to join a group, it's all there. I recommend that all gamers get your butts in gear, do extra life, raise money for those uh, Chills Miracle Network hospitals that are helping cure or heal or support those uh, in those children who are sick or injured or whatever. They deserve some love. So much love. So much love. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, let's do a uh, one more shout out or or one more thing. And that, of course, is Ultra Confusion has a Patreon. Ultra Confusion survives on the love and support of fans like you. And so we have a Patreon page. Patreon lets you, the fans, supporters, lovers, haters, ghosts, skeletons, monsters, sea creatures, aliens. Did I say aliens? Probably. Gods. Demigods, uh, necromancers, specters, uh, mermaids, and harpies, and whatever other kind of cre- uh, werewolves and vampires and mummies and robots out there to become active participants in the work we love through a monthly membership. This gives you access to exclusive content, community, and insight into our creative process. In exchange, we gain a bit more freedom to do our best work and the ability ability we need to build an even stronger creative career so currently there are two different tiers there is the one dollar tier that is one dollar a month or twelve dollars a year which basically allows you to have early access to all the playthroughs which i just posted the entire playthrough for retro machina i highly recommend that you pick up that game but all the patrons have access to it right now. Uh, if you're not a patron, you'll have access to it in the future. Um, and also at that $1 a month or $12 a year tier, you also gain the ability to take part in uh, members-only posts that may include polls or uh, information that's not um available to the public. Now, of course, the, the second tier is a $5 tier, and that, of course, is $5 a month or $60 a year. And what that will get you is the stuff at the $1 level, but also your organization or name will be added to our section of uh, our thank you section 
friends of the show, of every single Thursday night hangout. Um, so Noodle Boy and Andy Cluster and, you know, all anyone who's at that $5 uh, tier will be added to the thank you section. Now, I will skip the, the last one because unless Zealys wants really wants me to do it, next week okay next week i'll give you the mailing information next week all right so um now back into the news zilius exciting news even though the new world the mmo from amazon has yet again been delayed for the uh yes. the full release open beta will begin in september I meant to check it out. I mean, I did enjoy when I played the PC. I mean, I played the closed beta six months ago, probably. Mm -hmm. um, and I dug it. I thought it was good. There was a lot of, I think I liked there was a lot of different things to do. Um, Actually, the closed I, beta was held back in July. Uh, see, yeah, back in July. Yep. yep. Was it July? I don't see yep. longer than that. Um, well, there was also, a, yeah, yeah, it was July. Or no, I played the alpha. Which was April 2020? There we go. That I don't know. It was a while ago. Um, but regardless, I enjoyed playing it. Um, the crafting was good. It felt my problem with a lot of MMOs. It feels like crafting is like a side thing. It's not an immersive part of the game you play. It's like you go, you fight, you do dungeons. Oh, and then there's just crafting to do on the side if you feel like it. Right. Whereas with um, New World, I felt like it was a, I mean, you have to basically craft or like you're not going to have items. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I thought was interesting is it seemed like a much more integrated part of the game than other games. And that's why a lot of games I never craft because like, why do I need to craft my Excalibur sword when I can get the Excalibur sword of plus two just by doing the same dungeon with the less time of crafting it? Mm -hmm. um versus new world it seems like i like that and i found the combat interesting i liked it it was kind of the what most newer mmos are where it's not tab target with you know the global cooldowns and everything it's more of the action combat style although i know combat has undergone numerous changes mm -hmm. um in new world over the years so good chance it's not gonna look anything like it did when i played it which is okay um hopefully it, I, it, it continues to improve Yes, we certainly hope it continues to improve. So, yeah, it's definitely a game, especially if the, the thing I didn't see is, is the open beta only for those who have paid for the game? Because a lot of them are. It's almost like an early access, or can anyone play the open beta? Let's see here. That's a big, because if it's the open beta, I will definitely check it out to see if it's something I want to buy or not. Uh... They, they just said there's going to be an open beta that will run September 9th through the 12th. So it's going to be over a weekend. I mean, usually open beta is open to anybody. Everybody, yeah. That's how I read that. Yep. Um, so if that is the case, I will definitely... Wait, September 9th? Okay, that's the weekend after Labor Day. I think. I don't know. Whatever. I can't. I, I don't know. I can't keep my weekday straight. It's, I think it's at some point. So, yeah, I'll definitely be checking it out um, and see what it's all about. Good, good. Uh, I do want to do a shout out uh, real quick um, and congratulate. Of course, now I can't find the, the, the thing here. One second here. I wanted to make it. I wanted to congratulate one of the the developers that I interviewed at Momocon a couple of years ago. But of course, I can't find the freaking interview now which I apologize profusely for. Where the hell is that interview? Did you lose what you're looking for, sir? Yeah, I did. How dare you? Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to pull it up real quick here. Uh, I know that was released on Steam, so... Oh man, I, I, what? It just released like recently, but now of course I can't find it. Anyways, 
man, I'm, that pisses me off. I'll have to find it after the show, but um, shout out to, I wish I knew the damn company, and this is going to piss me off. Uh, hold on one second. While I'm trying to desperately find this stuff, I do want to, this is both good and bad news, because we, uh, we never want to hear about someone being murdered, but the end of the the amazing voice actress who mm. voiced uh, Cortana and Mercy in Overwatch, her killer has been arrested, uh, which is awesome. Um, I mean, it thoroughly pisses me off that that you know someone killed. Uh, no one should ever kill another person. Yeah, but um, you know it is it is nice that this person potentially will get his comeuppance. Yep, pretty much sucks all around. Now um, we talked about bands and not going into details on Twitch, and apparently one of the more controversial uh, YouTubers has received a ban and. They, of course, are scratching their head, like most people, because they're like, I don't understand. I'm doing the same stuff as, as you know, the majority of the um, uh, streamers on there. And that, of course, is Belle Del- Delphine, who is a very unique individual who has sold uh, little canisters of her bath water. Uh, oh, that's why I, I pulled it up wrong. Okay, so I do want uh, back in on in Momocon 2018. I had the the amazing opportunity to interview a gentleman by the name of Ian Beckman, who is the director of a game called Cosmos Quick Stop, and it's basically a um, I it's kind of like diner dashes. Um, I'll, I'll read you the exact uh, blurb that they have on uh, Steam. And that, of course, is uh, Cosmos Quick Stop s- simulates the fast paced thrill of managing a gas station in space. Upgrade your, yep. Upgrade your services, please, alien customers, and complete your daily chores through simple mini games that add up to a hilariously frantic experience with solo or couch co op play. Hey, so, Jack, co-op play doesn't mean you're going to play it. I don't know. I, I'll think about it. Uh, but I, I, you know, so congratulations to Big Sur Games for their release. Uh, they released it back on uh, August 18th. So that was a week ago. Um, you know, so that was three-ish years ago. So congratulations on finally getting your game. I, as some people may know or, you know, or not know, a lot of the games that get announced... Um, or are in development, not a lot of games actually, you know, see, uh, get to the end. Okay. There's a lot of developers out there who have amazing games, but they never get completed. Uh, case in point, the exact same Momocon, uh, Epic Tavern has been forever in uh-huh. beta. And I don't think it's ever going to be done, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't, I don't think it's ever going to be done. Uh, I think that they've probably moved on to another project. No! Um, Is it kind of like Star Citizen? Is that a finished game? Is it ever going to be a finished game? Oh, Christ. I, don't, be... I, don't, I don't want to talk about Star Citizen. Because that that is such is a... Is it a game? I don't know. I don't know. Yes? No? Maybe so? Who the hell knows? I don't know. Also, that uh, that same year, Momocon, I did get to sit on sit in on the Warren Spector interview, and of course, I asked I asked him the hardball question, which he he immediately said, "You're trying to get me in trouble, aren't you?" Uh, which was my highlight of uh, Momocon. Anyways, so uh, congratulations to that. Uh, developer or de- uh, uh, de- development team. Um, now, apparently, they still have a Star Citizen still has a pledge for eleven hundred dollars available. Christ Almighty! 
just here's, for you. Okay, so so here's the funny thing. Okay, so I ha- I bought into this bullshit. Um, they they had it on Kickstarter, and then they decided to take it off Kickstarter because they knew it was going to take a shit ton of time to actually get it out the door. And they made a shit ton of money, and then they like made pods for the company. One was in charge of like the lore. One was in charge of planets. One was in charge of combat. One was in charge of whatever. And so, you know, it's perpetually being developed. So I, of course, forgot that I actually had had donate uh, or sorry had um, pledged one hundred twenty five dollars to it, mm. and so I figured I I I uh, did the homework. I found out that I did indeed pledge one hundred twenty five dollars, and I got my account uh, all squared away, and I jumped into the game. And for whatever reason, every single time I play that game, even if I put it on the lowest settings, it chugs like a motherfucker. I can't play it. It's it's unplayable for me. And it's not like I don't have. It's not like I have a, a really old machine. I just. Did you know that Star Citizen is also free to play until tomorrow? Sure. Why not? I don't know. But um, I so uh, Zeli, have you checked? Out, uh, have you been playing any cool games? Um, I've got back into playing again is Last Epoch. It's a action RPG on the PC. Um, and just like uh, many of our other lovely games we've been talking about, who knows if we'll ever actually be finished. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those I can come back and play every once in a while, try like a different class, because uh, each of the five different classes has like their own subclass. Uh, and so you can go back and replay it, different subclasses, obviously very different game styles. So, for instance, you might have like a shaman who is either going to be or um, like the shaman character. So shaman, like damn it, him. shaman. I was going to let you get away with it once, but, I, it, <laughs> but you kept coming back to it. It's shaman. Or it could be like a beast master who's like the master of obviously like like a saber and a raptor and different animals. So two very different game styles, the same base class. Um, so it's a cool game. I like it. Um, but it's like, they've been promising like online play forever, which still is not there. The regular um, release is supposed to, or the release is supposed to be in 2022. Yeah. We'll and see. they've had, uh, their, they posted their alpha and early access back in 2018. Yeah, and apparently they put it on the, the, uh, steam store. Uh, April 30th, 2019. Yeah. I think I started playing it probably the first time it was a number of months ago. Mm-hmm. And I just, every once in a while, back, log back in, you know, get the thrills for kills, get some Zergen going, and enjoy some gameplay. So, um, this past Tuesday, you know, I, I usually stream on Sundays and Tuesdays. I did not stream this past Sunday because I don't think I was home. At the time, but uh, t- this past Tuesday, I played a new game called Tainted Grail, which is a it's a card game adventure. It's like a, a no, it's an RPG card game adventure game, rogue like. Actually, you know what? Let's just look at the the page, and I'll tell you what all the tags they have: dark oh, fantasy, another, another deck rogue. building, story rich, rogue like. So basically. You get thrown into this place that is probably like an afterlife or some weird ass um, different dimension and world. You've got lost souls uh, all over the place and you start in this town. Now, once you exit the town, you cannot go back into town until you're dead um, and you have to restart the the entire adventure. So basically, it it is... The best way I could describe it is, first of all, you're going to die a lot. Uh, you're going to choose, as you play the game, you're going to unlock more classes and more cards that you use because it's a card game. Yeah. Um, and you could have you have a certain number of actions you could take per turn. Uh, and, you, of course, you try to kill the bad guys. And there's a ton of different bad guys. Uh, and then there's bosses in different areas. And at, like I said, as you play through the game, you're going to open up more classes. Uh, you start off with 
kind of like a an average, you know, like sword wielding um uh, class. So the you know, sword and shield. Yeah, exactly. Uh and I don't know, like it's re I I I I've put in how many hours have I put in? I put in nine hours. Okay. Okay. So I've put in a good chunk of, of time, but I can't, I, I, I don't know. Like I, I just, I I don't know. Like, I mean, I must've died, I don't know, 20 something times. And I finally, finally beat the first of the four original or the four, um, uh, currently known bosses. Okay. Uh, one of the components that you you have to take into consideration is that when you go outside the town, there's this weird like miasma, 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 uh, weird ass like smoke, uh, stuff that you need a special candle for, and you have a specific you you have a very uh, limited supply of those candles. Once the candles go out, bad stuff will happen to you. So you can't explore forever, but you also have like these side quests, um, such as find the villagers, because when you start the game there, you're basically in a town with one stranger who will send you on your first quest, which is you have to kill the stone golem. And I will tell you this right now. It took me at least, uh, uh, probably 18 tries before I could kill the stone golem. And that's your first task. Yeah. It's your first one out of the three other guys. Nice. Um, but of course, you know, during that time I unlocked a bunch of different classes, but I didn't want to change classes because every single class has like totally different cards yep. and styles of play. But anyways, while you're out there, you got to collect the, you got to find the villagers. And of course you're not going to be, I mean, unless you're extremely lucky and you just like, you know, uh, run the table and are, are able to beat all the bosses, you're not going to be able to get all of the villagers in a single run. Actually, if you, once you beat the boss, you're allowed to return to town. Ah, oh, nice. Um, but I just don't know. I, I really don't know. Like it, it has potential, but at the same time, there's moments where I'm like, this is bullshit. Yep. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm still going to play it some more, but I don't know. That's how I feel about a lot of roguelikes, to be honest, is I find so many roguelikes use either the random card draw or the dice roll. And honestly, like, I feel more frustration over, you know, what did I draw basically for my version of mana to cast what I'm trying to do. And it really just annoys me more than anything else. And that seems to be like the flavor of most roguelikes is some variation thereof. Uh, that's why I like playing Hades. Is like it was an action roguelike that I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. But when it came to like all the roguelikes, it seems like I played recently is they're all that card drawing mana type of roguelike, where it's a large part of it is based off of RNG, and that just is not in. Like rogue RNG is not incredibly enjoyable to me from a gameplay loop perspective. I understand. I mean, I I I could see that. I mean, look, I mean, obviously people enjoy it because they're making them left and right. So there's obviously an audience for it. Well, the the thing is, a rogue lake gives you instant replayability. <laughs> Okay, because you're going to have to play it over and over and over again to continue to advance, to unlock new stuff, to unlock uh, new passive skills, new classes, all that stuff. I mean, that's new weapons, etc. Because there's also runes that you could pick up. And when you have three runes, you can combine them to make the stronger. The runes you can add to your armor, but you got to go through the game. And one of the bonuses you can get from certain areas is you can open up an additional slot. I think there's like three... uh, a maximum of three slots on your your weapon, and then I think four for your armor. Yeah. But you only start with one on each, and then you have passive skills that could, um, 
you know, add effects to your enemies. If you, if you make them vulnerable, then they immediately get stunned or there's a passive effect that allows you to gain 25% of your life for every single time you win uh, a, uh, a battle, which is key. Holy crap. Because there's not a whole lot. I'm, I always, I went through my, my health potions like that every single time. It was bullshit. <laughs> I do want to point out that uh, the previous early play, uh, early access playthrough was for a game called The Beast Inside. It has gone, uh, it's been switched over to public on Ooh. to YouTube, so anyone and everyone could look at it. But usually, and this is the case once again, is once I turn a playthrough over to uh, public, I then immediately release the review of it, and so that review is up as well. Nice. Indeed, sir. Indeed. And uh, like I said, Retro uh, Makina is the uh, the new um, uh, early access playthrough. And I will tell you this right now. I spent 10 hours in the game, or almost 10 hours, and it's a good game. It's it's a really good game. Uh, you're a robot. You, control, you could control... Uh, another robot to help you solve puzzles or to defeat the bad guys. It's an interesting story. You're you're a robot that malfunctions on a um, an assembly line, and because of that malfunction, kind of becomes self aware. And then you go on a, uh, a journey or adventure. You have to explore three different worlds, and those worlds are uh, pretty in depth. I mean, there's a lot to do in every single world. Like That's I said, one I played. Hell of a malfunction. Huh? That's one hell of a malfunction. What? You you gain sentience. That's not a malfunction. That's like a power up, man. You well, you have to play the game. It. it I'm, I'm not going to give anything away about the story. But it's oh, it's good, terrible. and um, some of those boss battles are intense. Really freaking intense. I it took me several times to beat the first and the final boss, and for some reason I just was super duper lucky. I was able to beat the the second boss on the first try. Was that because of luck, or did you get the mad skill? Luck, absolute luck. <laughs> Sometimes I, I figure yeah. it's better to be lucky than good, right? Absolutely. All right, so before we close. I want to, I've been, I've been saying this every single week for a while. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not been vaccinated, please get vaccinated. There's way too many cases of individuals being hospitalized because they're not vaccinated and hospitals are at full capacity. I just found out last night, my grandfather has tested positive for mm. uh, COVID. Uh, he's in a nursing home. Damn. Uh, he is being isolated for the next 10 days. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, he comes out of it. Okay. You know, the, the, the older an individual is the, the greater the catastrophe can be, but that's not always the case. There are individuals who have had COVID and have passed away who are younger than myself and Zelius or Indeed. about the same age which we will not say what our age is. But if we were like, wow, Nirvana was back 30 oh, years ago. 21, because we're drinking. Yeah. But anyways, uh, please uh, get vaccine. And even if you get the vaccine, uh, they're, they're announced that they're going to do a third uh, round of the vaccine. It's going to be a booster. I believe it's going to be available in like October or November. Uh, so if you've already been vaccinated, get the booster. Uh, and use common sense when you're out in public. Wear a freaking mask. Because you don't want to catch it. And, you know, you don't, if you have an illness, doesn't have to be COVID, but if you have an illness, wearing a mask can help protect others. I don't believe in common sense. I believe in dying. Oh, Lord. Anyway, so, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we've reached the end of the Ultra Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. So, I want to thank everyone from tuning, for tuning into the Ultra Confusion. Thursday Hangout for myself, Charlie, and Zelius. It's been a pleasure. Give me everything come our heads, our mouths, and of course, our hearts. We'll be back next Thursday. Are you are you going to Dragon Cons? Or are you going to be here next Thursday? 
I wouldn't be going on Thursday. Okay. We'll be back next Thursday for another Ultra Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Remember, kids, keep on gaming in the free world. Amen to that, brother. Thank you.